Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're uh, we're going deep on something you might not think about every day. Uh huh. SMT stencil storage. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about how factories keep those really precise metal templates organized. You know, the ones they use to put solder paste on circuit boards. Right, the boards that make all our electronics work. Exactly. So a listener sent us a whole bunch of stuff about this uh, this SIR 5000C intelligent stencil storage cabinet thing. From Southern Machinery. Yeah, Southern Machinery. We've got like technical specs and marketing stuff, even to YouTube video. And API documentation. Yeah, the whole shebang. It's kind of amazing to me that even something like stencil storage... It can get this complex. Oh, yeah. And, like, right off the bat, some things jumped out at me. This cabinet, it, like, talks to other systems in the factory. That's pretty common now, though, actually. Factories are getting way more interconnected. Okay. But there's also this built-in light show to help workers find the right stencil. Makes sense. Got to keep things moving fast. And the PDA is involved somehow. I don't know. It's <laughs> intriguing. Definitely a sign of the times. Even simple storage solutions are getting smart. Okay, so let's break this down. From the specs, this SR5000C, it's basically a big cabinet, right? Like 1740 millimeters wide, 770 deep, and 1800 tall. So not exactly something you'd put in your kitchen. No, but on a factory, floor space is money. So packing in a lot of stencils without taking up a ton of room, that's huge. Absolutely. This cabinet, it can hold up to 80 stencils in two layers. Okay, that's a lot. And they really hammer this efficiency angle in the marketing materials. They're like, this cabinet is going to revolutionize everything, especially with this pick-by-light system. Pick-by-light is pretty cool, though. Think yeah. about it. You're a worker. You need specific stencil, and you've got rows and rows of them. Lights guide you straight to the one you need. No more like digging through shelves. Exactly. It saves a ton of time and reduces errors. Okay, that makes sense. And there's even like a security feature. If you grab the wrong stencil, a light flashes and a buzzer goes off. Yeah, you got to prevent those little mistakes that can cause big problems later. I can see that. But then they start talking about this Mazurp integration, and I'm like, wait, what? It means the cabinet can talk to the factory software systems, hmm. like the manufacturing execution system and enterprise resource planning. So it's connected to the internet. Not exactly browsing the web, but... Yeah. It can communicate with those systems to track inventory flag, potential shortages, and basically make sure everything runs smoothly. So it's like a smart warehouse. Pretty much. Constantly sending and receiving data to optimize the whole operation. Wow. Okay, this is way more than just a cabinet. And then there's this PDA we see in the diagrams. What's that about? The PDA is like a digital assistant for the worker. It guides them through the process of interacting with the cabinet. Scanning barcodes, receiving instructions, confirming tasks. Oh, so like those scanners they use in warehouses? Exactly. It helps streamline everything and keeps track of every step. Okay. I'm starting to get the PDA piece. But we also have these API documents. I'll be honest, API docs are not usually my idea of a good time. But sometimes you find some really interesting stuff buried in there. Yeah, like the fact that you can control this cabinet remotely. Oh, wow. So like from your desk or even your phone? Yeah, potentially. And remember the pick by light system. Well, the API docs tell us that the lights can change color depending on what's happening. Interesting. So it's not just a simple on off thing. Nope. And the buzzer sound is customizable. Huh. They really did think of everything. It seems like it. But you know what's funny? We've got this marketing language that's all like revolutionize your efficiency. Yeah. And then we've got these really technical API docs that show how complex this thing actually is. It makes you wonder how much of the hype is real and how much is marketing spin right? That's a great question. And it's one we should definitely explore further. So in the next part of our deep dive, we're gonna dig into how to sort through the marketing noise and figure out what's really going on with this cabinet. Stay tuned. It's a skill we all need, right? Yeah. Figuring out what's real and what's just hype. Especially with all the marketing stuff we see every day. Yeah. You can't just take their word for it when they say something's going to revolutionize your business. Right. So how do we cut through all that noise? Well, you got to look for evidence. Do they have case studies? Testimonials from actual companies that have used this thing and seen results? Like hard numbers. Did production go up? Did they save money? That's what would convince me. Exactly. Don't be afraid to do some digging read reviews, compare it to other options. So basically, be a little skeptical. A healthy dose of skepticism is always good. But okay, even with all the marketing hype aside, there's some pretty impressive things about this cabinet. The integration with the factory systems, the pick-by-light system, 
the potential for remote control. It's definitely pushing the boundaries of what's possible with storage solutions. And it's not just electronics either. It seems like all kinds of industries are moving towards this kind of automation and data integration. Yeah, the whole factory is becoming one big interconnected system. Right, and as we get more data from all these systems, we can use it to optimize everything even more. Yes, exactly. Find bottlenecks, improve workflows, make the whole operation more efficient. That's what I find exciting. It's not just about working faster, it's about working smarter. Using data to make better decisions and adapt to changes quickly. But all this connectivity makes me think about security. What are they doing to protect this system? Yeah, security is huge, especially in a factory environment. A breach could be disastrous. Imagine someone hacking into the system and messing with the production line or yeah. stealing sensitive data. That's yeah, a real risk. Yeah. We need to know what kind of safeguards Southern Machinery has put in place. Encryption. Access controls. And what about physical security? Can someone just walk up to the cabinet and tamper with it? That's another good point. You need both digital and physical security to protect a system this important. Okay, so we need to look into that more. But something else has been bugging me. We keep saying this cabinet talks to other systems, but what happens if the network goes down? The internet's not always reliable, oh, exactly. right? Exactly. What if there's a power outage or a server crash or even someone trips over the Ethernet cable? Does the whole factory grind to a halt? Yeah, that's my worry. We're so reliant on these connections. What happens when they fail? Ideally, there would be some kind of backup system. Maybe a local database it can use mm -hmm. temporarily or a way to operate offline for a bit. It would be interesting to see if they mention anything like that in the documentation. Definitely something to check. Right. A truly robust system needs to be able to handle those kinds of disruptions. Okay, so we've talked about efficiency, integration, security redundancy, but there's one more thing I think we need to consider, the human element. You mean the actual workers who will be using this cabinet? Right, technology doesn't exist in a vacuum. It always interacts with people. So how do they actually use this thing? Is it intuitive, user-friendly? Do they need a ton of training? Because if it's too complicated or frustrating to use, it's gonna negate all those efficiency gains they're promising. Ease of use is critical for any new technology to be adopted successfully. And we also need to think about the impact on the workers themselves. Does this cabinet make their jobs easier or does it create new challenges? Automation doesn't always mean job losses. Sometimes it just means the nature of the work changes. So maybe they need to learn new skills, but they're still essential to the process. Exactly. A well-designed system should empower workers, not replace them. Okay, I think we're doing a pretty good job with this deep dive. We've covered a lot of ground. But, you know, there's always more to think about, even with something as specific as a stencil storage cabinet. It makes you think about bigger issues, right? Yeah. Like sustainability. Is that something we should be thinking about even with a stencil storage cabinet? Sustainability is becoming important in every industry. So, yeah, probably. So where does this cabinet fit into all that? Well, there are a few things to consider, like the materials they use to build it. Are they sustainably sourced? Can the cabinet be recycled or repaired when it's no longer useful? Right. And what about energy consumption? Is it a power hog? Are there any energy saving features? And we could also think about the impact on the manufacturing process itself. Does this cabinet help reduce waste? Does it lead to a more efficient use of resources overall? Those are all good questions. And I don't think we have enough information in our sources to answer them definitively. But it's a reminder that we should be thinking about sustainability at every stage. From design to manufacturing to disposal, mm -hmm. the whole life cycle. Exactly. And hey, maybe a more efficient stencil storage system could help make the electronics industry a tiny bit greener. Every little bit counts, right? Okay, I think we've pretty much squeezed all the juice out of these sources. But before we wrap up, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought. Okay. Um, We've talked a lot about the benefits of automation and how this cabinet is getting smarter, but what if it gets too smart? What happens if these systems become so automated that they start making decisions without any human input? The machines taking over. Uh, it's a classic. I know it sounds like sci-fi, but it's a conversation we need to have. We're already seeing AI and machine learning playing a bigger role in manufacturing. And that raises some ethical questions. How do we make sure humans stay in control as we automate more and more? And how do we design these systems to be not just efficient, but also safe, responsible, beneficial to society as a whole? Big questions for sure. Yeah. And we're going to need to keep asking them as technology keeps advancing. It's not about being afraid of progress. It's about making sure that progress works for everyone. Well said. So that wraps up our deep dive into the world of SMT stencil storage. 
Thanks to our listener for sending us these sources. Yeah, this was a fun one. And thanks to everyone for listening. Until next time, keep diving deep and keep asking those tough questions.